Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, Alex and Jason, back for more punishment. <laughs> for us or for the listeners? Uh, yes, yeah, all of the above. Alex, how'd okay. your waiver claims go? Did you get everybody you wanted? I got nobody that I wanted. Yeah, and... I know. I, I, I saw that and I enjoyed it as a uh, Raheem Mostert, Christian McCaffrey roster manager. I was pleasantly surprised and also kind of happy to see you not get either Jarek McKinnon or Mike Davis this week. So congrats to you on being a you. sacko in the waiver column. Yeah, I, uh, you know, like, you know how it's uh, sweet and sour sauce. I'm changing it to, to sweet and sacco sauce after uh, this week. Yeah, not great. Uh, <laughs> well, we got a great episode lined up. We're going to be previewing all of this weekend's NFL football games and talking you, uh, to you about uh, what you should be looking out for from a fantasy football perspective. Let's start with tonight's game. The uh, Sacco Bowl of football teams. We have the Dolphins at the Jaguars. What are you looking for from the Dolphins? Anything special? Uh, Mike Isicki is currently tight end six, uh, which is pretty good. You'll take that. And I, they finally aired the ball. The first week was just really strange for them. They got blindsided by the Patriots. Last week, they got destroyed again, but at least they had better passing numbers. I don't want anything to do with anybody in this backfield. I'm still holding on to Jordan Howard for some reason, only because Just I a Miles found some. Gaskin takeover. I don't know what you're hating on him for. I haven't found anybody else to replace him. I think that's why Gaskin is currently the 27th ranked running back fantasy points wise. And he's also uh, on a lot of people's waiver wires and free. I'm just saying, if you're desperate, if you're Raheem Mostert, Christian McCaffrey, roster manager and you whiffed on all of your backups because you're a sacko on the waiver wire much like Alex <laughs> wow. maybe you should consider picking up Miles Gaskin so you have a, a warm body to put in that's true um, just a side note for this first game the over under on it's 48 points and both defenses stink um, the Jaguars so defense wasn't that bad against uh, Tennessee they kept them in the game it's going to be high scoring for a Thursday night game. So huh. if you're if you are looking for people to plug and play the first week, you know, it's possible Ryan Fitzpatrick is startable. I'm starting Minshew in a league this week. Um, I, I think the quarterbacks are both going to go off um, because it doesn't. I, I don't think the Dolphins have a, a sophisticated running game to keep them from th just airing the ball out. And let's see what James Robinson done. If, if, if he continues to do what he's doing, then um, he, he's he definitely has to be start. He definitely has to be started. Yeah, he has to. He absolutely has to be started in this game. Uh, as far as what I'm looking for from the Dolphins, the uh, the Miles Gaskin snap ratio. I'm looking to see if that continues. He currently out snaps Brita and Howard 88 snaps for Gaskin 30 for Brita and a lonely 17 football snaps for Jordan Howard so far. Wow. He's got to be cut everywhere. Like, you can't keep holding on to this guy. Um, and then for the Jaguars, does a, does any one of these three receivers, Keelan Cole, DJ Chark, or LaVisca Chenault Jr., separate themselves? Um, Keelan Cole getting touchdowns in back-to-back -back games, but really not a whole lot of targets there to make you, you know, go out and run and want to get him. Uh, Chark obviously been one of the bigger fantasy busts so far this season. Yep. Uh, I know he's one of your guys. Are you hoping for more out of DJ this weekend? Yeah, you have to. Uh, Chark currently the 33rd ranked wide receiver uh, behind both uh, Keelan Cole, who's 16th, and LaVisca, um, who is at 31. Um, if Chark doesn't turn it on this week, I... I think I have to go pick up Keelan Cole in, in our league where I have DJ Chark because if Keelan Cole ends up turning out to be what DJ Chark was supposed to be, I need to have one of them. And it seems like Minshew is a pretty good quarterback. I mean, he's, yeah. he's currently 11th ranked. James Robinson's 15th and Keelan Cole's the 16th best wide receiver. There is fantasy value on this team. 
Yeah, there absolutely is fantasy value. It's just like you got to be hoping for one of these receivers to finally set themselves apart here and get close to that double digit target number in a single game. Um, What I will say is I don't think uh, he's going to get to double digit targets, but I think he's going to get to double digit touches. And that is uh, LaVisca Chenault Jr. You saw him go from just a few touches in the first game up to five, excuse me, a few rushes in the first game up to five rushing attempts last game. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets closer to 10 and then you throw in, you know, three to five targets. You're talking double digit touches and opportunities for Visca. I just think he's a guy that should be on a lot more teams. But yeah, well, I mean, if they're like me, who's not really paying attention to anybody other than what you have on your roster and you're like, why isn't DJ Chark doing better? Why am I seeing Keelan Cole, who started out last year actually really well, too, and then fell off a cliff? Um yeah, he's just kind of somebody that's that's floating under the radar and, and should obviously be picked up if he's getting those touches. If if Chark doesn't do it this week against currently the 30th worst defense against wide receivers, then there's an issue. Yeah, needless to say. All right, let's move on to our noon game Sunday. Um, first up, 49ers at the Giants. This is just two devastatedly hurt teams Falling, falling into each other for 60 minutes of football. Um, for the Niners, it's going to be Jarek McKinnon versus Jeff Wilson Jr. for the spotlight. I mean, I'm not anticipating the Jarek McKinnon three down running back takeover. I don't really think that that's possible or plausible, I should say. Um, is there anything else you're looking for out of the Niners? Does Kittle come back? He's currently questionable as we're recording this. We we don't know. Uh, Vegas currently likes this game to be the lowest scoring game of the week. Uh, the over under is forty one and a half. Uh, so if I mean Vegas, I I haven't really focused on it too much in our pod yet. But I like to look at Vegas to be kind of a barometer of hey, if it's if they think it's gonna be high scoring, those are the players you want to start. If they think it's gonna be low scoring, you, I use that as a tiebreaker of who I'm going to start with this game where they're expecting no offense. I don't know if I really want to start anybody. I should note that Jarek McKinnon is currently the 18th ranked running back. And that was with Raheem Mostert, who's the sixth ranked running back. Who's now out. If he, I can't see his touches going down. So there's no reason why he should not be a top 20 running back this week, just because I think the touches have to be there. You saw what David Montgomery did to the Giants last week with um, with his uh, touchdown reception. And it seemed like they were um, the checkdowns were open the entire game, whether Mitch was hitting them or not. It's an entirely different story. Um, <laughs> but in in just some of the, the film that I've actually seen on Twitter, you know, small clips, by the way, Brian Baldinger, fantastic follow uh, for his Baldinger breakdowns on during the week because he'll He's like, he shows things and laughs at them and points things out that you normally don't see during a game. Fantastic follow. So Brian Baldinger there. Um, I I think Jarek McKinnon's going to be a top 20 running back this week just because I think he has to by default. They have to, somebody has to score. He, um, he might've been my number one uh, waiver wire pickup at the running back position because I feel like he actually offers season long value. Um mm-hmm. Obviously, that would be assuming Josh Kelly is not available on the waiver wire. He's my true number one. Uh, but Jarek McKinnon, I mean, the touches are there. The uses in, inside the red zone is there. It's just, can he, one, stay healthy, and two, really garner himself a meaningful workload? Like, yeah. nobody wants to start the third string running back on a team and think that it's, he's even going to be remotely fantasy relevant. Um he just happened to score touchdowns in back-to-back weeks, propping, propping him up in that value. But he was, for all intents and purposes, still the third string running back. What really needs to happen here uh, for McKinnon, and I think it may, may have already happened, is he needs to supplant or usurp Tevin Coleman in that number two running back role. Uh, was yeah. Coleman out for multiple weeks uh, with a knee sprain that Shanahan is calling worse than Mostert's? Maybe you see McKinnon take over that number two role once Mostert does come back. I hope that Jeff Wilson came out of the darkness, is present for a couple weeks, and then goes right back to the little hole that he came out of uh, in case of another injury happens. <laughs> what is he, a groundhog? 
He could be. He'd be a good looking one. I tell you what. Uh, and then the my next big question is: Is Kittle is Kittle healthy enough to play? I hope he plays. I want him to play. I need him to play. Uh, he did practice in a limited fashion on Wednesday. Hopefully he plays. And oh, by the way, one more week till Debo is eligible to come off the IR. Yeah, there's a. Uh... I like this being a low scoring game. I, I talked about the Jets defense being uh, run defense being good just before week one, and that has proven to be false. Um, I don't want really anything to do with either of these teams this week because the 49ers no. defense is still good. And well, or I, sorry, I said Jets earlier, but the, the Giants have gotten run all over the entire season, but they don't have any running backs to play. So I don't want any. They got Devonta. I don't like any. You there's so many unknowns with this game. Yeah, we don't even know if Jimmy G is going to be playing in it yet. So I mean, no. Or right. Is Deion Lewis going to be the guy? Is Freeman going to get snaps? I would say don't be Sterling surprised. If Deion Lewis. I think Deion Lewis probably leads the, the Giants backfield in snaps. Um, there's no way Devonta is able to learn the playbook in a meaningful way to actually contribute in a few days. So I would say peg Dion Lewis as a desperation flex if you absolutely have to. Otherwise, it's probably Devonta and Gallman in some sort of spell fashion. But I bet yeah. De- Devonta takes over next week. If if Evan Ingram doesn't start showing up, um, who's currently the 25th ranked tight end? Um, Ouch! That's that's not good. He's been healthy. He's just not getting the ball. And I I feel like part of that's a Jason Garrett offense thing. Like they featured Witten while he was there, but once Witten was gone, they never really threw the tight end. And I maybe you're feeling at least some effects of that. Yeah, I also would also just say for the Giants, don't be afraid to add Golden Tate with Sterling Shepard going out with the nasty toe injury. I'm just like... Golden Tate looked good. I wouldn't be surprised if he had another five to whatever, five, 10, maybe 12 points. If you're really desperate in a PPR situation, I think you yeah. can get some catches. Um, so look for that. And then Darius Slayton to take over as the number one in that offense at receiver with Shepard out for at least a couple weeks. Yep. And but, we talked about the Giants' schedule and how it loosens up a little bit here after having to yeah. go through some a really rough defense stretch here with um you know going through the Steelers the Bears and and 49ers to start the year that's a just a hellacious first 3 weeks from a facing a defense thing so Not if you great. do have Daniel Jones you you can't give up quite yet um especially if you were looking for a breakout season from him you have to have to hold on to him and then next up, Washington football team at the Browns. What are you looking for out of the football team? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I Terry McLaurin's currently ranked 11th. I, I don't know if that continues. I guess the opportunity has, like they have nobody else to throw to you, or I mean, they're throwing to Logan Thomas a little bit. And then Antonio Gibson looks like he's a legit running NFL running back, even though he only had like 30 carries in college. Um, it seems like he has the skills to be there. Peyton Barber fell off a cliff after, after week one and should be dropped in all leagues. Literally did nothing last week. I think he had one carry for one yard or something like that. Yeah. So it seems, so it seems like it's Antonio Gibson's backfield going forward, uh, which is good to see. Well, when Antonio Gibson is rushing 13 times for 55 yards in a score, including the goal line work, I mean, Ooh, you got to be happy if you landed you some Antonio Gibson. I understand he was a letdown in week one, but the ascension is uh, is coming. And their offensive coordinator, Scott Turner, said that his role would, quote, continue to grow. So oh, that's magical. And then, yeah, Terry McLaurin. The only thing I'm annoyed with with this offense is Logan Thomas is like matching McLaurin in targets. But he really had a dud last week. So hopefully Logan Thomas turns it around. Um, and yeah, then Antonio Gibson should should be a trade target. If you like see if you can snipe him for a low price of like a I'm not saying I would trade Todd Gurley for him, but I mean I might actually. Um 
see, just see if you can snipe him because it seems like his value uh, is only going to get higher as this season goes on. And then next we have the Browns. Uh, how do you, how bad do you think Baker Mayfield's going to look this week? I'm, I'm going to go like a four out of 10 as far as how good he looks. I don't know. See, I was trying to figure out what defense to pick up from a streaming option. The Washington football team is a great defense. (sighs) I guess I was thinking about picking up the Browns defense against Washington. Yeah. Uh, It seems like all of the, there's a lot of good matchups this week from like a, a high scoring versus high scoring team or a like there's just not a lot of streaming options available. Maybe the Bucks uh facing Denver and a backup a quarterback. Defense. Um if they're available. Again, a lot of these teams are, you know, they're already scooped up because they're currently top ten defenses. Uh I think Baker Mayfield's gonna suck this week. I think Baker Mayfield's always gonna suck. <laughs> and if he doesn't, then it's almost like Unless a miniature surprise. Unless they're the Bengals defense and he can run around and do whatever the heck he wants in the backfield. Yeah, but he's, he still gonna th- he's still going to throw a terrible interception <laughs> every week. I just don't think and he's going to have that same time to run around and get outside the pocket and do all those things against the Washington football team like he did against the Bengals last week. I, I, I He looked great because everybody looks great when they play the Bengals. So yep. I just wouldn't be surprised if he came back down to earth a little bit, although he is playing at home. So. Maybe I think he, uh, we all know what this offense is. It's turn around, give the ball to Nick Chubb. When Nick Chubb gets hired, it's turn around and give the ball to Kareem Hunt or check down to Kareem Hunt. Both currently top 10 running backs, um, which is pretty crazy for being on for the week. same team. I would team. be trading both away if I had either one. I would be trading both away to try and get something that I think That's has a little more staying power. Yeah, um, and if, if you're an Odell Beckham owner, like try to trade him coming off of one week. I mean, he didn't. He, he scored a touchdown. It was like, oh, I'm hot shit. Um, and all that good stuff, but he only had six targets and that's not (laughs) going to be sustainable. Oh man. Speaking of the bungles, our next game Bengals at Eagles. Um, are you looking for anything out of the Bengals other than Joe Mixon's continued mediocrity? If they're not going to pay, like they paid him 40 million bucks and they're, they don't even have him on the goal line. Dude, Gio is where it's at, man. Have you seen that mustache? He just thinks everybody's going to clear the way. It's like the parting of the Red Sea. I'm pissed as a Joe Mixon owner in multiple leagues because I thought he was going to be way better. And hopefully he he will start being better this week. He's so good. It's just they don't. It's like free Joe Mixon. Yeah, right. Getting free Joe Mixon instead of the the former Aaron Jones movement. Yeah, who Um, has been free. I, I... hated watching the Thursday night game last week because they kept throwing to AJ Green who just doesn't seem like he has it anymore and every time they threw to Tyler Boyd it was a completion and I want them to start throwing the ball more to Tyler Boyd and less to AJ Green and if that happens like I think you're going to see what we what at least I predicted before the season I think Tyler Boyd should finish substantially ahead of AJ Green but if they keep throwing the ball to to Green like they are then I'm going to be upset um one little sleeper play uh Drew Drew Sample uh I was going to go there oh you beat me go on tell he, him all about he, it he looked really good after oh, uh, so mm. a, after injuries occurred last week um see you later Uzama he looked really good and rookie quarterbacks like to check down to their tight ends. And if he was a second round pick last year um, and so they think he has some skill, he's a very deep sleeper play, but I think somebody that you could pick up and start if you needed to. Yeah. Burrow liked him a lot. There was definitely a little connection there. And then out of the Eagles, what are we looking for? No Rager in this one, doubtful and looking to be out. Uh, potentially for a while. Um, do you think that, uh, oh, actually he placed on injured reserve with a UCL tear in his thumb, the same thing that breeze had. So there you go. Um, do you think (laughs) that Deshaun Jackson comes alive? No, (laughs) I don't know. I, I mean, we talked before the season, we thought Carson Wentz was still going to be a top 10 quarterback this year. He's currently ranked 25th. Uh, at the uh, quarterback position for fantasy and they have no wide receivers. Elshon isn't, we have not heard an update on him. Rager's out. 
Deshaun Jackson isn't good. He's old and has been not great for a while. And that leaves Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz. He he doesn't have anybody to throw to. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, yeah, I mean, the last Alshon update was that he could miss several more weeks while he recovers from offseason foot surgery after being ruled out week two. So who knows with Alshon? And I mean, who really wants to start him? Like, you're going to have to prove it multiple weeks in a row, Alshon, uh, yeah. to actually be put back in lineups. Until then, I it's, love, it's I just say, I love. Well, I would say I love Miles Sanders this week. I have him ranked fourth overall. Um that's, with out of yeah at flex uh, you look at cincinnati's run defense they got destroyed by the browns last week they got destroyed by the chargers the week before uh if philadelphia is going to win this game i think miles sanders is is going to go off yeah that's a yeah i would be excited to fire up miles sanders this week uh moving on raiders at patriots what do you think of this one is uh las vegas going to be able to keep up with cam or no it, their offense looked good in what I saw on Monday night. Darren Waller um, is by far and away their number one option. Uh, 16 targets last week, eight targets the first week. Um, wow. You got to love that, man. That's that's wow. unbelievable. Um, so theoretically, the Patriots defense always does what? They take away their best, you know, the offense's best option. That seems to be Waller. So they're going to they're going to bracket Waller because that's what they do. They're going to try to stop man in the box for Josh Jacobs. Absolutely correct. And they're going to say, all right, um, Nelson Aguilar can try to beat us or Hunter Renfro got hurt at the end of last week. Uh, Henry Ruggs. I I can see them struggling in this game. I just don't see Derek Carr being able to outdo the Bill Belichick defense. I uh, I think it's Pats by more than seven. Well, but the line the line is New England minus six currently. Well, I would take I would take pet the Pats there to cover. There you go. Um, for the Patriots, the question is: Is Nikhil Harry a thing? He certainly was last week. However, I don't really envision a lot of shootouts coming for New England. Um, I mean, they're going to be ahead in most games. Cam is so good. That offense is so good with him there. As long as Cam is healthy, not having to really throw the ball a whole lot. Uh, They were just in catch up mode all week last week against Russ. I don't think they're going to be in catch up mode against Las Vegas. I am fading Nikhil Harry this week. Um, Man, did Julian Edelman look good, though. Wow. Yeah, that's Um, what I was going to go with, too. Man. He he was great. I just don't think that this team is going to support two receivers on a regular basis. And we all know that Julian Edelman, historically, he's been, what, a top 10 wide receiver the last, like, two years. Um, And I I would expect that to continue. Um, 11 targets last week, 7 targets week one. Um, both weeks over 10 fantasy points and a half PPR. Um, he got the crap kicked out of him by Seattle secondary, but um, yeah, he, I, I don't understand why he was going in the seventh or eighth round when he has the pedigree. I think people were maybe fading cam that a little bit, but cam has looked super accurate. Um, I, I'm all in on, on Julian Edelman the rest of the year. Yeah, uh, one thing I would say that I'm excited for from the uh, Patriots backfield perspective is that Damian Harris could potentially return from IR next week and maybe potentially be inserted as the starting running back for the Patriots. So that would potentially excite me because I think he could be a three down guy. And Sony Michelle is just brutal this year. But I think we all saw that one coming or most of us anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damian uh, Harris might might have been dropped in your league if you're listening to this. So he's potentially somebody that you should go out and, and get a week early before oh yeah. he, he pops up on all the waiver wire shows next week. I was going to say, he's uh, going to be on every waiver wire show next week. Is that, hey, if this guy was dropped by your whoever that had a bunch of injuries, then you should pick him up. But it's like, well, just pick him up now and don't spend any fab on him. Correct. Um. Here we go. Shy town next. Bears at Falcons. Are the Bears going to be able to keep up with Matty Ice? 
Yes, if Julio doesn't play, who's currently questionable <laughs> with that hamstring injury. You're not worried about uh, Russell Gage? Uh, no, because the Bears secondary has been elite so far this year. Mm. And also, uh, between Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack, uh, they were both uh, getting over 20% pressures on quarterbacks uh, last week when they were on the field, which is a crazy amount. Um, I, I mean, I'm picking up and plugging Mitchie in a league. Uh, currently the uh, Falcon, the the Falcons are giving up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks this year. Uh, even worse than the Dolphins, who have gotten destroyed by Cam and Josh Allen. Uh, and Atlanta's gotten destroyed by Russ and um, Prescott. So yeah, I'm, I'm firing up Mitch this week. Uh, I'm firing up Allen Robinson if you if you have him. Uh, you drafted him to be really good. And he's kind of let you down so far. He's currently 52nd ranked wide receiver in fantasy, which is not great. Um, oh. Currently behind his teammates, Anthony Miller and Darnell Mooney. Uh, some, somebody's going to have to score. Uh, and David, David Montgomery is going to be a great start the rest of the year. If you got him in around four or five, uh, I think you're ecstatic that you have him on your team. Good old Monty, 29 for 146, averaging five yards per carry so far this season on the ground with another four for 55 and a touchdown through the air. Man, you got to think that he's going to keep it up against the Falcons defense this week. And then this is something I think is kind of cool that we should start. So we're going to start it this week. It's called our stat of the week. Uh, Stat of the week. In the comments below, why don't you just let us know what team you want to stat on and uh, we'll go from there. And every week we'll just do a new stat about a new player on that team. Um, Alex, did you know that Todd Gurley has not forced a single missed tackle through two games? Uh, Being a fantasy owner of him and seeing him get the ball and carry it for three yards. Yeah, I can believe that. (laughs) (laughs) Not one missed tackle. They're two weeks for Todd Gurley. <laughs> How is that possible? Oh, he was on our breakout show as a possible resurgent because of the workload. It's like, yeah, the workload's there. He's just bad at it. Oh, my God. And then Russell ah. Gage. What a monster, man. As long as Julio's like even remotely limited, like Russell Gage is a stud. You got to fire up all three of these guys. They're going to be yep. out of every single game. And Matt Ryan's going to thir- flirt with like, uh, what they threw 686 passes last year. They're going to be like 786 this year. Like it's unreal what they're doing right now. Yeah. You did ask if he was going to throw 50 passes last week. And I said, why would you doubt him? And he actually only threw 36 passes last week. Uh, more efficient. All right. Next game Rams at bills. What are you looking for from the Rams? You think we're going to get some clarity on that uh, from that running back position for LA? Well, it's it almost sounds right now like Cam Akers might not play. It also sounds like Malcolm Brown might not play. And if that's the case, then they're apparently just going to turn around and give the ball to Robert Woods. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it seems like <laughs> Henderson's. <laughs> oh, that was good. But they might actually. Hey, it hey, surprise that's what me. they had to do to get yeah. their number one wide receiver involved in the offense last week. Uh, unbelievable I'm, I'm like following that game and you like all of a sudden it pops up Robert Woods has a seven yard rushing touchdown or something I'm like come on this is ridiculous um, yeah so it, it kind of sounds like Daryl Henderson's going to be the guy this week he's going to have an expanded workload the Bills defense has been relatively okay uh, I still think the way that you beat them is is through the air uh, so I'd expect another big game out of Tyler Higby who had, who's coming off of three tutties last week uh, Cooper Cup seemed to get that connection relit and Robert Woods just disappeared last week for whatever reason, which is somewhat concerning. Yeah, I mean, I'm just a little excited to see what Daryl Henderson can do in a featured role this week uh, due to the health issues at the same, posi- you know, at the position. Other than that, I just want to see I want to see Higby do it two weeks in a row, not like three touchdowns again, but just be a contributor and involved in the offense. And then out of the bills, like, man. How long is Stefan Diggs going to be able to keep this up for? Like, I was, I don't think anybody really saw it coming. Like, we understood how great he was after the catch and, and his A dot and everything else and how much of a fantastic route runner he is. But I just, I think 
And nobody even really questioned Josh Allen's arm strength. It was just the involvement of the passing game, period. And then how many targets is, you know, Stefan Diggs or any wide receiver actually going to get um, in that offense? So I I think Diggs got more. I think Diggs almost got more targets than uh, Kirk Cousins threw passes last week. So I'm pretty sure that he's probably happy to be out of Minnesota. Uh, 13 Ah. targets last week, eight catches of 153. Uh, I mean, he went in the fifth round of our league. He's currently wide receiver four. He is a a for sure start the rest of the year. And if you have him, you are sitting real pretty. Yeah. Speaking of out of Minnesota, I think there's a lot of Minnesota fans that wouldn't mind if Kirk was out of Minnesota right now, but yikes. You like that? Mm, Love it. Also, right. just con- continue to stay away from the Bills running backs until somebody proves themselves. I want yeah. nothing to do with Singletary. I want nothing to do with Zach Moss. Both are ranked. Uh, Devin Singletary is currently 36. Zach Moss is 42. I don't honestly know how much value, if any, they have going forward. Josh Allen is the best running back on that team. So there you go. Uh, next up, we have Texans at Pittsburgh. Um Will Fuller only in on 63% of snaps last week. Can he get Hmm. healthy? Uh, I think you're benching him everywhere until he proves it. And I think that if you have Brandon Cooks, you're happy and probably firing him up. Although you're happy about the role. I just would not be thrilled about the matchup against the Steelers. D. Although they might be running for his life. Yeah, right. They blitz more than anybody else in the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers do. They also get the most sacks in the NFL. Um, the correlation there is is pretty pretty evident. They're they're bringing more than four on on like forty five percent of plays. I believe I read earlier this week. It's it's a very big amount. Can their line hold up long enough for Deshaun to get the ball downfield when he gets enough time? Wide receivers do well. If they don't get enough time, wide receivers don't do well. Um, I you cannot trust Will Fuller of the two. I guess you have to start Brandon Cooks, but still not super impressive yet. I know he's still battling that quad injury. I'd like to see him get back to full strength. Uh, David Johnson looked fine last week. I he's very similar to Todd Gurley. Uh, last week, eleven carries, thirty four yards. I there. He looked so good week one, and he just didn't look that explosive last week against Baltimore. Uh, who He's I, not, have a I good mean, defense. nobody in fairness, like I don't think very many people are going to look explosive against Baltimore. Like I would fade Clyde Edwards Hilaire this week. I would just be hoping that he has some passing game work, maybe a touchdown if he's lucky. But the running game, I don't think is going to be very impressive. Um, but yeah, David Johnson and then, you know, this matchup with the Steelers. I almost think DJ could be a potential buy low candidate after a couple of rough uh, back to back matchups. Um, so maybe may, like and I'm not saying go out and spend anything too crazy for him, you know, try and do it like a two for one package. Maybe you landed Josh Kelly and you can pair him with some sort of receiver to go get him. Um, but and then out of the Steelers, Deontay Johnson did not practice on Wednesday. I think it's probably just maintenance thing. The guy is a stud. He hung eight for 92 and one on Denver and he leads the Steelers in targets with 23. Like I just am looking forward to the continued ascension of Deontay Johnson and the resurgence of big Ben. Just hope that James Connor stays healthy along the way. What are you looking for out of the Steelers? We talked before the season that they had one of the easiest schedules in football. It was them in Baltimore, right? Yeah. Uh, it's go get as many Steelers as you possibly can. Um, I, I'm i not really looking for all that much. I, I just want to see James Conner still get 80%, 90% of the carries after it being a mystery who to start last week. And and you fell for that one pretty pretty hard. Uh, when, oh. when James Conner's healthy, it's James Conner's team. Um, Chase Claypool, I guess, is an intriguing prospect. Uh, we'll see if if they keep airing it out. I believe he's their highest draft pick in quite a few years uh, since like Plaxico. Um, I just hey, go ahead. You want Big Ben. You don't. It's going to be hard to predict the wide receivers, but he's going to throw the ball to somebody. Yeah, it just seems like he's I don't know. 
it seems like he's really honed in on Deontay. Uh, but you brought up Chase Claypool. He is slowly eating away at the snaps of James Washington. So he is not viable now. However, if you're in a deeper league, like a 14 or a 16 team league, and he's out there, I would definitely add Chase Claypool to the end of your bench. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, also, also Eric Ebron has done absolutely nothing. Uh, I thought he would be better uh, this ben, year. For but... whatever reason, it's just like everybody wanted Vance McDonald to be a thing for so long. Ben's yeah. just never really been that guy. And I don't necessarily get it, but um, anyways, next up. Titans at Vikings. Does uh, Derrick Henry get on track against the lonely Minnesota Vikings? He better. If he doesn't, then uh, red red flag city, right? But yeah. here, like the thing with Derrick Henry is they're not they don't want to run him into the ground now. Like to to your point with Ryan Tannehill, and I know you're still super high on Tanny. No, that's not his name. Tanny? Tana Thrill, baby. You know it. You never say it. And it annoys me. The thing about Ryan oh, is the come fa- on. Is the fact like they they want to keep Derrick Henry healthy, so they they are gonna throw the ball hopefully a little bit more to make Ryan Tannehill a legitimate, like you should be starting him. I know he's a top 10 quarterback so far this year, but the the volume just isn't there to support it, so he's being super efficient by throwing touchdowns. Hopefully that changes this week with A.J. Brown coming back. They'll air it out a little bit more, uh, especially against a terrible Vikings secondary. I I would not be surprised to see Derrick Henry continue to struggle a little bit and then lean, continue to lean more on the passing game just to try to keep Derrick Henry healthy till they get towards the end part of the season and let him erupt in the playoffs. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised about that either. Um, just like I wouldn't be surprised about the continued eruption of Ryan Tannehill, who is fantastic. Um, honestly, I just want AJ Brown back. Like this offense is frustrating for a lot of people because nobody really pegged Corey Davis as uh, you know the number one wide receiver. It's like it's it's like the resurgence of a lot of guys that were all hyped up for so long that are finally mm-hmm. like showing, but nobody wants to play them. And Corey Davis is one of them. Um, Yeah. But Johnny Smith, man, what is that guy has been incredible so far this season. Um, Currently the number one ranked tight end. uh, And the guy who drafted him in our league, like props to him, but also he's like the most fantasy illiterate. I have no idea how we got him. Uh, Scotty, if you're listening, hello. (laughs) But like, man, oh, just I have him everywhere now, but. Yeah, Johnny Smith, man, I, he's doing things that like Delaney never did in this offense. Just great for the Titans. Um, and it should it should be noted. My, my comment about Derrick Henry, I mean, through the first two weeks, he has 56 carries. It's not like they're not giving him the ball. That, no. That's not that's not sustainable, though. They're not going to give him 28 carries a game. You don't think so? They, what if they do? No, they they need to keep him healthy. They're just not going to do that. And so I can see them r- starting to open it up and letting Tannehill throw, especially now that AJ Brown is hopefully going to be back. Hopefully back. Yeah. And then, Hey man, if they're going to keep running him into the ground like that, they're like, maybe you want to go get you a little piece of Durinton Durinton Evans, I believe the backup there. So, um, and then for the Vikes, are we looking for anything thrilling other than Dalvin? no, and if I'm a Dalvin owner, I would be worried again about him. like I have him ranked way down uh, this week. He's he's my 10th ranked running back, which I even wanted to go a little bit lower than that. Only because I don't know if the carries are going to be there. Like they don't have the ball. Their defense stinks. And if they're going to be behind in every game and need to throw, then that just limits Dalvin's upside. Yeah, I completely agree here. I just. Dalvin, you, all the Dalvin managers just have to be so disappointed in what this offense and team has really turned into so far this season. Um, that defense hasn't been able to keep them in games. Um, I would just, I mean, you got to keep firing up Thielen and I, I don't know. They've run the fewest plays. They just, it's just all disappointing. 
Right. Dalvin and Thielen are both being super efficient with their touches so far. Dalvin has three touchdowns, which is propping him up to be running back eight currently. But I don't I don't know if he's not going to score a touchdown every game. Maybe he will. Chances are that's not going to happen. If he doesn't score a touchdown, then he's not a, a RB1. No. Um, our next game, Panthers at Chargers. Head coach Anthony Lynn announced Wednesday that Justin Herbert is starting for the Chargers. I like it. Do you did you read what happened to Tyrod? I did. Can oh you my, have you have you ever people, gotten your lung punctured before? You know, the gif the gif of of uh Will Farrell in his mom's basement in the robe going like this saying what an idiot (laughs) and then and then the tweets were all like the tweets were all like chargers announce hiring (laughs) hiring medical staff (laughs) because they they must have canned the guy that deflated tyrod taylor's lung like oh my goodness Aren't you glad as a, if you, well, I don't think you have any shares of Keenan Allen, but I think you're excited if, if you're a Keenan Allen owner to, to fire him back up again with Justin Herbert back out there. Um, the, the over under for this game, I think is too low. It's 43 and a half. Carolina's defense is not very good. Um, I would smash this over. I don't, I don't understand Only because why. of the chargers. Yeah, I mean, they looked fine against Kansas City. I think a, a second start where Herbert's actually going to know he's playing all week. They can throw some wrinkles in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I, there's nothing really to look for in this game, in in my opinion. I, th- I think you kind of know what, what the Chargers offense is going to be. It's going to be Hunter Henry sprinkled in with Joshua Kelly and Eckler running the ball. And if they keep checking down to Eckler, Eckler is still a top eight guy probably um i I think it's the longer tie rods out the better it is for this offense and then flipping over the other side with carolina i think teddy bridgewater is more than playable this week Uh, i know that the chargers defense is good that's a good my guess my guess is is that they're going to not be running the ball that much now that mike davis is is their starting running back and they're going to be just trying to air it out um they're going to try to get their ball to their best playmakers, which are all on the outside now that Christian McCaffrey's out and they're going to be checking down to Mike Davis. Yeah. I guess my question there is, can Robbie Anderson really keep it going? That guy has been an absolute stud through the first two weeks of the season. And then I guess the one thing I'm looking for out of the Panthers offense is what is the running back rush attempts look like? Uh, everybody's pegging Mike Davis to go out and have all the attempts and, you know, take a hundred percent of that role. But I think Curtis Samuel might flirt with not double digit, but close rushing attempts. I would not be surprised to see Curtis Samuel out there handling the rock. Um, that moves us on to Adam Gaseland jets at Colts. <laughs> Everybody's doing terrible down in Adam Gaseland. We're in a 12 team league and Frank Gore was dropped, even though he got 20 some <laughs> odd carries, because that's the disrespect for Adam Gase, Frank Gore in this offense right now. Like it's at the Colts are a good defense, but it's going to be 20 rushing attempts for three yards a pop for, you know, 60 yards total for Gore. Uh, Sam Darnold doesn't have an offensive line protecting him. Uh, By the way, Jamison Crowder is probably out, so he has no receivers, and then he has Chris Herndon, and it's going to just be like 60 minutes again of the Jets running against a wall, and I don't know. The Colts are going to throw a lot because they have Phil Rivers, and you always end up throwing a lot if you have Phil Rivers as your quarterback. Um, I think the one thing I'm really looking for is can Naheem Hines get a rushing attempt again? One, and two... Uh, how good does Michael Pittman Jr. look in stepping in for Paris Campbell? I uh, I think T.Y. has been a letdown so far this season. So maybe maybe Phil Rivers goes to the rookie. We'll see. Uh, Indianapolis is favored by 11 points in this game. <laughs> uh, so that that'll give you some kind of flavor of what Vegas is thinking is going to happen. I would take Uh, Indy to cover. 
So Indy's going to get ahead. They're going to run the ball down the Jets' throats with Jonathan Taylor. To, what side um, of that are you on? Um, I do don't take, know. But no, the, the thing with so it, many though, points. well, no, it's Philip Rivers, and I'm going to plug yeah. a kicker here real quick with Rodrigo Blankenship, uh, currently the fourth best kicker in fantasy football. Um, Philip Rivers um, and that offense don't seem to be finishing off drives all that well. Um, and that'll lead to field goals. So I just that's can't what believe, I'm, I can't believe that's you, what I'm looking for in this game. You plugged a kicker on a fantasy yeah. football show. I did. Everybody just, just did. turned us off. It's fine. Oh my God. Moving on. The Everybody boys just got smarter though. The Cowboys at Seahawks. What do you, how do you think this one goes? Uh, what are you looking for? I don't know if we know that Dallas is any good. Um, and we, we know that the Seahawks are good. It's going to that... be a gun show. I, I think it's going to be a shootout. I just, I, what I'm really looking for out of the Cowboys though, is when, if ever, does Michael Gallup get involved in this offense? Like, I don't know if he does. Why has he like, I understand CD lamb is good at football, but why has Michael Gallup been so freaking non-existent? Um, it's just, that's, that's super frustrating for me. I think that they're going to have to throw a lot to keep up with the Seahawks. The Seahawks are just going to keep scoring. Russ is lighting the world on fire right now. Chris Carson, you got to be thrilled with the week two workload, yep. um, firing him up everywhere as a top 10 play. Um, yeah. And then lock it and, DK start both like yeah I don't know anything to no there it's it's the highest over under in Vegas this week at 56 points uh, which is a pretty high number and I think rightfully so um, I Dallas got down big they had to throw the ball a ton Dalton Schultz uh, we kind of cracked the joke about him last week about would you pick him up and the answer was no he did have 10 targets nine catches a lot of that was check down work um, but still like I, he's he is playable this week potentially especially if they're going to get down big to Seattle um, DK Metcalf might be a top five wide receiver this year going forward because he looks great and they take that deep he's shot so to good. him a couple times he's a game, so good and he catches the ball he's faster than every cornerback he's bigger than every cornerback he's like he he is the freaking boss. What was um, it? Uh, Stefan Lattimore gave up the most points to a receiver that he covered last week in DK Metcalf than he has to any receiver in like two years or something obscene. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah, DK Metcalf had a stud. former NFL defensive player of the year. Um, just really like last the year time. as in former, not like 10 years, like it's like the reigning defensive player of the year. My goodness. Yeah, DK. Uh, um, let's do a little sit start here though. Say you do have Gallup. Would you start Gallup or Keelan Cole this week? Um, I would start Keelan Cole and the reason I say that is because of Miami's defense just leaking to wide receivers. Um and I, I think they're they're going to air it out. And so I would start Keelan Cole over Gallup. It's just amazing because everybody was so high on Gallup going into the season through two weeks. He's just been a perennial letdown. Um, yeah. Moving on. Lions at the Cardinals. How are you going to run out and get you a piece of that Lions backfield? <laughs> no. <laughs> to start against the card. You don't want to plug and play carry on. Come on. It's the Cardinals. No. Yeah, okay. So again, you know, stay away from the card or the Lions backfield, even against the Cardinals. Um there's just if, not if I had to put a bet, I don't know if anybody gets over six hundred rushing yards in on that team again this year. And I know Adrian Peterson started out with like ninety against the Bears, but I just don't know if a single and then running his back usage completely went away last week. Carry on got a, a touchdown on like nine carries. It's just you gotta be so frustrated to be a Lions fan. Like the, the big thing is, is that Galladay practiced in a limited fashion yesterday on Wednesday. And so theoretically he's back this week. And I think that offense just looks so much different with him and 
you know, him and Stafford on the field. If if Galladay is available, like throw trade offers for him. Maybe people forgot that he was a top five wide receiver last year. Um, try to go get him if an owner would be stupid enough to trade him. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing I would add is the rumor mill uh, has it out there that the Patriots are courting the Lions for Marvin Jones. So that would be intri- intriguing. Are they going to get a second round pick for him like uh, the Patriots gave up for Sanu? Because I would <laughs> no, do that. No, they already gave it away. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> uh, and then from the Cardinals, I mean, the continued dominance <laughs> of Kyler Murray. The stretch of games coming up for the Cardinals schedule. Like, if you have Kyler Murray, you have to be ecstatic with what he's done this season. And just, I mean, the dominance... The continued, you know, chemistry with DeAndre, I mean, is what are you looking for out of the Cardinals side of things? I'm afraid for Kenyon Drake, uh, currently the 23rd ranked running back in fantasy. Uh, He had 16 carries week one, 20 week two. Um, So it it seems like the quantity is going to be there. Um, Okay, but but he also ran 20 times last week for 86 yards like. I mean, I the volume is there. It's just last week was the Washington line. I'm not I'm not super concerned about Drake. I just think, if anything, I think that Kenyon Drake makes a fantastic trade target. Interesting. You've always been higher on him than me. Um, I, I it's the good. Kyler Murray show. And um, Kyler Murray is going to keep rushing the ball in from 15 yards out or whatever he's doing. And um, I'm just hoping that uh, Larry Fitzgerald continues to get targets. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Next on the slate, Buccaneers at Broncos. Does Tom figure it out? Yes. He, uh, I believe, was rated by Pro Football Focus this week as um, like the third or fourth best quarterback. Uh, I think Behind his, who? Uh, Blake Bortles? Ross. No, not. Get out of here with that. Uh <laughs> Tom looked great. I believe he's had eight drops for, uh, from his wide receivers the first two weeks of the year, Rough. Uh, including a Scotty. I think Scotty Miller dropped a touchdown last week. So yeah, Br- Brady's looked great. Um, and I would expect him to continue to carve up uh, defenses, especially now that Chris Godwin's going to be back. He's cleared um, from his, con- he had a concussion, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, he's back, um, was cleared on Monday, which means he was, pretty close to being able to go on Sunday. It was just more of a, he had to get a practice in. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting this offense to continue to explode a uh, scary thing. We don't know. We still don't know what cause it's going to happen between Leo and Ronald Jones. Um, Ronald Jones had a fumble last week. A player, apparently ca- uh, coaches still uh, bench players for fumbling in the NFL. Um, and once that happened, Leonard Fournette uh, took over. He did bust a late, uh, 40 yard touchdown run when the game was over, which definitely made a stat line look a lot better. Um, yeah, but two touchdowns is nothing to sneeze at. 12 carries, 103 and two. He also had four catches, which, um, you know, we know he can catch the ball. He had 75 catches last year. Um, and if they're going to continue to use him as a pass catcher out of the backfield, um, I, I guess he's the guy over Ronald Jones going forward. It's, but it's but just we don't know. disappointing. It's just so hard because. Like it's you have to be frustrated if you if you roster either one of them because Rojo you fired up last week after his big week one and then yeah. fumble see you later you know miscommunication with Tom out the door and then Leo was it a flash in the pan is Rojo going to get a shot to keep his you know to keep his job it's just this is the this is you know, the, the typical Buccaneers way of handling this backfield, especially with Bruce Arians, like he's going to pull and push as somebody does something, then they're going to be out and there's going to be the next guy. If that was Leo, that would have fumbled. It would have been Rojo going in there. So, right. It's just, it's hard to start either one. Yep. Uh, but if you're in a rough spot and have to, I, I get it. Uh, also, Rob Gronkowski should be dropped. He had one target last week. Yes. Drop Rob. Uh, what are you looking for from the Broncos other than the reemergence of Blake Bortles? Stop with the Blake Bortles stuff. He's not what? playing. We so for if you're listening or watching this, uh, 
we, we do our rankings and I go into our ranking sheet. They're available Jason at had, our website, the fantasy football sackos.com. I, I go in there and Blake Bortles is listed as Denver's starting quarterback. And I'm like, like, what the hell is this? He's not starting. If you, in case you missed the news, he got signed yesterday or two days ago by, by the Denver Broncos. Um, yuck. I, I don't know what to do here. Jeff Driscoll's their starting quarterback. I guess Jerry Judy is interesting. If Noah Fant seems to be the only person that you can play instead, other than Melvin Gordon on this team, um, stay away from everybody else. KJ Hamler tied for the team lead in targets last week. KJ Hamler did not play week one. Please, I'm just saying it's a name that you should know. It rhymes with I don't know, Dantzler, and he's a great guy, so why not KJ Hamler? So, ham on the bone. I got nothing. This is all bad. Um, it was all terrible. I was I was hoping you were going to keep going, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Packers at Saints. Our Sunday night game. Packers, Aaron Jones is only in on 48% of snaps. Do you think a dud's coming for him? No. No? No? He's maybe the most talented running back in the NFL. He's, he's so really good. good. He he's is really good. We we were way off on that uh, preseason. I still had him as a RB one, but I'm right. We at knew he was good. It was just the usage. There's been no AJ Dillon. I'm just, I don't know. We I said before week one, I said he's going to be an RB one to start the season. I'm just worried about how they use him throughout. So yeah, I, I Josh Jacobs did did pretty well against uh, New Orleans defense. It seems like New Orleans defense is different at home than they are on the road for whatever reason. Yeah. I'm not not exactly sure why. Um, I guess the thing I'm trying to pay attention to um, is is their passing offense can it support more than just Devonte Adams? And the reason I say that is because yes, in fact, Aaron yes. Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers only had 30 pass attempts last week. Um, I just don't know. I, I know they were up big, but when that offense is really going, they're running the ball and Air, and Rodgers is converting third downs. Um, I, I would just be surprised if they keep passing as, you know, if, if the quantity is there to support more than, than Adams. Well, MVS has been great in back-to-back weeks. So, and Lazard hasn't been a slouch either. Well, MVS wasn't exactly fantastic last last week, but he's serviceable anyways. Um, But New Orleans defense is substantially better than Minnesota and Detroit's. Yeah, especially at home. And so this is kind of like their first test. I mean, looking out another week, uh, Green Bay has got Atlanta. Um, So, I mean, that's a hell of a fantasy start for for Packers players. Um, and even their playoff matchups at Detroit, home against Carolina and te- uh, home against Tennessee is looking pretty tasty. Um, so maybe uh, load up on Packers players if uh, if they're available. Yeah, I mean, especially D- Devontae Adams did not practice Wednesday and is viewed as uncertain for week three after pulling his hammy in the win over Detroit. I'm just. If he doesn't play, you have to fire up MVS and Lazard and yeah. hope that you pick the right one. Um, I would not be surprised to see them be more cautious with him, especially because they're 2-0. and Yeah. And then what are you looking for out of the Saints? You know, the continued running into the ground of Alvin Kamara? He's not... He's not getting that much, that many carries. I mean, he's he had 12 carries it's week one, 13 carries usage. week two. Yeah, I mean, 14 catches through the first two weeks. The dude is explosive. Uh, I have him ranked number one this week um, because especially if uh, Michael Thomas is not going to play, he's their playmaker. Like He's who they look to for explosive plays. They look to him at the goal line. Him with that speed out to the edge is very difficult to stop. Um, And then Jared Cook kind of took a step back a little bit after a, a big week one um, only two catches for 13 yards again this is not super surprising I guess um, but yeah it, the Saints offense is the Saints offense I'm more worried about Drew Brees who has not looked very good his last three games that he's played he did he not, has not he did not look good against Minnesota in the playoffs last year 
He did not look that great against the Bucs, and he did not look that great against the Raiders. Um, I have serious concerns about his arm strength, and um, just saying, if they if he doesn't look substantially better this week, and like maybe trade Michael Thomas and see what you can get for him, um, because I just don't know if that connection is going to be like it was last year. Yeah, Michael Thomas still not practicing. I would be and I would be over the moon if I had Traquan Smith on my team. Like you would love to fire up Traquan after him and Alvin were the focal points of the offense last week. Um, Drew Brees just we talked about that cliff in our offseason podcasts about how, you know, eventually everybody gets to it. It's just it's not pretty when it comes. And, you know, everybody in the Saints organization said that this is Drew Brees' last season with the team. I just think we're seeing why. Um, hey, he's slowly. got the third. He's got the third worst arm on the team, right? I mean, Jameis has a better arm, and Taysom Hill has a better arm. So, yeah. Ugh. Um. Yeah. Fire up. You got to fire up the Saints if you got them. If you have Traquan or Kamara. Um. If Michael Thomas sits, which we think, I think he probably will. Um, yeah, the, the the Saints are favored by three points currently in Vegas. I would take Aaron Rodgers and the Packers all day on Sunday night, um, the way it currently sits, because I think they have the better quarterback, and um, I think their defense will be fine enough, considering I, I don't trust Drew Brees currently. I would definitely take the Packers to cover that. Uh, Monday night game, probably the best game of the season, Chiefs at Ravens. What are you I'm, looking for here? I'm, I'm rooting for points. Uh, I'm rooting for downfield passing. I was I surprised see, that this wasn't the highest point. Uh, total it's not. Of the it's week. only 54. Dallas, Seattle's 56. Detroit, Arizona's 55. And Casey, Baltimore's 54. So th- they're projecting it as the third highest scoring game. Um, I was a little surprised by that too. Um, but at the same time, when you have two really good offenses and if for whatever reason, it seems like they can both go on like seven minute drives. And so like it could be three to three after the first quarter where they both, you know, stall out in the red zone after running the ball all the way up the field. Um, I, I would not be surprised by that. Um, I, I don't know what's going on in Baltimore's backfield. You cannot start Ingram or Dobbins currently. You just you just can't do it. Uh, I'm waiting for Marquise Brown to look better. Um, he's clearly their number one, but I don't. He he's just been okay. I, I was expecting more from him, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the biggest thing from the Ravens is that they really, truly haven't been challenged yet. So I don't think that you've had to see much from them after blowing out the Browns 38 to six in week one and then rolling over the Texans 33 to 16 last week. I think that this is a game where you will actually see them try for 60 minutes. Um, And we, you know, you (laughs) talked about how you can't start any one of their running backs. Honestly, this is a time this game, I would be okay starting either JK Dobbins or Mark Ingram because I don't think that you're going to have Gus uh, Gus Edwards in there muddying things up. I think that he took over in the second half last week, taken over in the second half of both games that they've played so far because they're up a bazillion points. And so I think that the Chiefs are able to keep it close, keep Dobbins and Ingram on the field, keep them producing. Mark uh, Marquise Brown, I think, is actually, you know, used for four quarters. Um I'm excited to see what this point total ends up as. I would probably take the over for that point total. Um, and then the, for the Saint, the, go ahead. I was just going to say this game is super important when it comes to like real football. And the reason I say that is because so they're they're playing in Baltimore. There's no there's going to be no fans in the stands. I at least think that there's not going to be any fans there. Kansas City is already letting fans into their stadium. If Baltimore doesn't win this game, then they're potentially looking at going to Arrowhead for a playoff game where there's going to be fans, and that makes a substantial difference than playing at home. Um, So this game is very, very important for Baltimore to win this game, uh, looking ahead to the real-life NFL playoffs um, in January. Yeah, 
I don't know if they're going to have fans or not. I mean, the only thing I've been able to find is that the Ravens won't have fans, at least for the initial part of the season, whatever that means. Um, I could not imagine going into Arrowhead Stadium, though, for the playoffs. A hugely important game for real football. Um, But what are you looking for out of the Chiefs here? Do you think that uh, do you think that Clyde Edwards Hilaire is able to find some running room against Baltimore this week? I don't know because David Johnson didn't really find any room against Baltimore. Oh, that's um, an insult to Clyde Edwards Lair to be even grouped with David Johnson. Eh, is it? I mean, currently they are Baltimore is giving up the least amount of fantasy points to running backs so far this year. And that that includes the Chubb and Hunt uh, week one who destroyed Cincinnati last week. I I think it just depends. You're you're gonna see early what Baltimore's game plan is they like to blitz a lot. And if they have the box loaded up, bring in the pressure, then Kansas City is going to try to throw over the top of them. Clyde Edwards Hilaire has not been super involved in the passing game so far. Um, I, I, he did have six catches for 32 yards last week, but it, it just didn't really look good. The Kansas City offense looked very disjointed last week, and that was more to do with, with the Chargers defense than anything. Uh, Sammy Watkins is questionable, still has a concussion. Um, you're going to fire up Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. But um, yeah, I don't I have no idea what Clyde Edwards or Hilaire is going to do. You obviously have to start him if you have him. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him slow down a little bit. And they try to shut the running game down and, and focus like against the Chiefs. You have to take one thing away. You either have to play back and they'll run you to death or you play up and they'll throw over the top. You have to stay consistent, but either way, it's going to be one of the most fun Monday night football games to watch this season. I'm really looking forward to it. And I think there's going to be a ton of fantasy points between Lamar and Mahomes. Um, with that, that brings us to newsy stuff, newsy stuff, best drop in the league. Alex, my newsy stuff for you today is uh, you've probably heard of this. This might be old news for for some people, given that it's a couple weeks old. However, it's new to me. Um, Did you know that the Vancouver Canucks were fined thousands of dollars for allegedly sneaking in two strippers into the Edmonton bubble for goaltender Thatcher Demko, uh, rookie who pitched a a shutout? What what's uh, do you do you have a great stripper story? (laughs) No, no, I don't. Do you? (laughs) I plead the fifth. And with that, thank you guys for listening. We're going to transfer to our social media page. I'm a married man, Alex. I would never. We are at the FF Sackos. Please follow us on all social media platforms. Visit our website, thefantasyfootballsackos.com for all of our latest positional rankings, uh, which are posted weekly. And uh, with that, good night. I wonder if the goalie pulled the goalie. (laughs) Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.